In this video, I want to discuss this challenge of uh, language modeling. And so this is kind of, before we get right into neural networks, we first have to discuss what the problem is that we're actually trying to solve with our recurrent uh, neural networks. So we're going to discuss this challenge uh, of language modeling first. Okay, so kind of the whole point of language modeling is we want to compute the probability that a sequence of words you know, can occur given some data set that we have um, trained on. And so the whole point is to compute some probability of the sequence of words. So P of W1, word 1, and then W2, and then all the way to WM. Uh, and uh, kind of an important thing to note is that the ordering absolutely matters because if you take some sentence um, in, uh, in any language and you jumble up the, the, the word order, that usually changes uh, the, the can change the entire uh, sentence. So with a language like English, for example, if I took this first bullet point and I rearranged all of the words, then it, some I can produce an arrangement that doesn't make sense at all. You know, there are some languages where you can mix up the order and it's still kind of okay, but um, you know many languages this is not uh, this is not true. And in general, just sequences. Um, when dealing with just sequences, you know, if you mess up the sequence, that kind of defeats the purpose of putting this in a sequence, right? So that's kind of what, that's kind of shows the importance of these words are ordered. And it turns out that, but even before recurrent networks, you know, we still had language modeling techniques, of course, like, but they were fairly advanced, and in fact, they're still used today. So things like um, uh, conditional random fields, for example, they're actually still used today. They were used for the same purpose. They're used for language modeling, and uh, they're again they're still used today. In fact, people have combined recurrent neural, net recurrent neural networks and some of the more advanced statistical models, like conditional random fields, together into kind of one uh, into one architecture, and that also turns out to work uh, really well. And so this kind of illustrates the whole point of Doing something like, like like language modeling, and after you've built this model, it turns out that you can use it for a ton of different other things. So, kind of kind of the the two things that we'll be using it for uh, when we get to when we get to code is we'll be using it for text generation, which is super cool, and uh, sentiment analysis, which is also super cool. So I'm going to discuss each one. Let me just discuss each one of these, um, but First, let me discuss kind of the generative model and discriminative model stuff. So, so a, a generative model can actually, as the name implies, can actually be used to generate new data based on what we've trained uh, our data set on. So if I take, um, you know, what we'll, we'll get to in code is we're going to take, a, we're going to train a language model on uh, Shakespeare, on Shakespeare's sonnets. And uh, based on what we've trained, we can actually generate new language, new uh, new sonnets um, that sound just like they were taken uh, from Shakespeare. Now, some of the, now, the longer you train it and the more advanced model you use, the better results you're going to get, uh, of course. But even, you don't even have to train it for that long, and you will we'll see uh, that you can still produce some pretty, uh, pretty Shakespearean uh, text. So that's kind of the whole uh, generative model and, and text generation things for uh, sentiment analysis, that's more of a discriminative model. And so what a discriminative model does, you can think of that as just being plain old classification. Given some input, I want to figure out what class it, it goes into. And we can build a problem. Remember with the softmax, we can build a probability distribution over all possible answers. And so we can say that, oh, well, there's a 90% chance that our input is in this class. Or there's a, you know, we can kind of build that. And so you kind of think of a discriminative model as being like classification. And so the point of sentiment analysis is that uh, it's usually it's usually a binary classification problem where you want to organize your input into two different classes, good or bad. And so, you know, this is useful for things like uh, movie reviews. If you leave a movie review, then we can use a, a discriminative model to figure out whether you like the movie or you didn't like the movie based on the words in your review and the ordering of the words um, in your in, in your review. So the order also uh, is is very important. 
So, you know, we can, that's what, we, for sentiment analysis, that's actually what we'll be doing. We'll be having, we'll be pulling a, uh, a data set from uh, IMDB. I believe Keras has a data set for that. So we'll be using that data set and then training on that data set and figuring out if we can classify our, uh, or classify our movie reviews into, like, whether someone liked the movie or someone didn't. Okay. So... Uh, the next, the kind of the last two points are actually pretty advanced topics. So one um, is that we can use these probability models for things like machine translation. So what that is is that's taking text from one language and translating it into another language. And so you know, if you use something like Google Translate, they use uh, neural machine translation to do this uh, task. It's actually really cool how they do that, and they published a, a blog post on the research blog as to how this actually works. And then kind of one really neat task that's come up in the past a couple of years is image captioning. So given this kind of combines uh, images and text where you take a you can take an image, feed it into a kind of convolutional neural network that's tailored for images, and you can feed the output of that into a recurrent network and you can have it generate captions. And this isn't just doing a retrieval. This is actually generating a novel caption. It's generating a new caption. Okay, so that's kind of like a broad overview of what language modeling uh, actually actually does. And uh, so I actually want to show you kind of an example of uh, this whole, because I remember I mentioned that the whole point of this is to compute a sequence of words. And so take, let's take a look at this. If we have, you know, I suppose that our language model is trained on the English language, you know, then based on this we should based on having this fact we can kind of your system examples sentences that grammatically make sense are assigned a high probability so here's the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog this is a sentence that makes grammatical sense and everything works out and so it has a very high uh, probability or like uh, the man in a suit opened the door that sentence grammatically you know makes sense and so it's assigned a high probability but then there are sentences like Green, red, Murphy, Beats poster, which is just some random assignment of, um, of words, is assigned a very low probability because it's not something that you would actually see usually in, in, in English text. You know, that's not saying that its probability is zero exactly, but it's something that you wouldn't uh, tend to encounter at all. And so that's why it's assigned a low probability. You know, and there's other examples of this. And so you can kind of uh, see why this is particularly useful, because in text generation, for example, we want to generate sentences that have this high probability. As In, in other words, we want to generate sentences that grammatically uh, make sense based on what we've trained on. So having this, building this language model using current networks is something that's very useful. And same for... Uh, like uh, machine translation, for example, we want to generate high likelihood translations. We don't want to generate some poor translation where when we use a language model, we get a very low uh, probability. So it's kind of the whole point uh, of, of language models. And uh, so I'm just going to take a quick second to, to review and then we'll move on. So the whole point of a language model is to build some kind of model where you give it a sequence of words and it computes the likelihood of those words occurring based off of the uh, based on the training set and so that's kind of the whole point uh, of language modeling and it's super useful for a, for a wide variety of tasks like text generation and the sentiment analysis and so here's just kind of an example of uh, language modeling that's actually going on where we can take a, a particular sequence of words and the model will assign a probability to them. So that high probability things or that uh, high probability things correspond to sentences that you would naturally see based on what you've trained on. So and low probability sentences are things that are just kind of like jumbled that are unlikely. Okay, so anyway, that is, this is language modeling. This is kind of what the problem that recurrent neural networks are trying to uh, uh, look at. And so we'll be discussing more about recurrent neural networks very soon.